when Richie Mehta, writer, director and creator of the clutter-breaking, benchmark-setting, Emmy-winning first season of Delhi Crime comes out with a new show, you bloody well sit up and pay attention. Once again based on true events, his new Amazon Prime video series, Poacher, takes us into the dangerous, thrilling world of wildlife crime fighting, which is just as badass as it sounds. Poacher, which will no doubt go on to be one of this year's most unputdownable series, follows the investigation that uncovered and took down the largest ivory poaching ring in Indian history back in 2015. Richie is a tremendously self-assured filmmaker with a fine command over craft. He knows how to tell a great story and tackle issues important to him while never losing sight of the audience. He knows how to grab us and, for the most part, hold us for eight episodes through his thoughtful dedication to authenticity in examining true events but also coating them in arresting drama and layered characters. It's in many ways filmmaking at its purest. A storyteller using fiction and a narrative to make us feel for a thing as much as he does. Set amidst the jungles of Kerala back in 2015, Pocha, which flits with ease between English, Hindi and Malayalam, puts us on the front lines with the officers of the Kerala Forest Department. The wildlife authorities believe that there hasn't been an elephant poaching case for decades. But new evidence suggests that close to 20 elephants have been massacred for their tusks right under the noses of the authorities. And elephant poachers are incredibly dangerous. As field director of the Kerala Forest Department, Neil Banerjee, played by the always reliable, effortless Dibendu Bhattacharya, mentions in one scene, these poachers are brutal, bloodthirsty hunters with nothing to lose. It really makes you wonder who the real, savage, wild animals are. Spoiler alert, it's people. Neil assembles a crack team to uncover an extensive nexus of poachers, smugglers, buyers and sellers whose activities range from dealing illegal art to the rich right up to funding international terrorism. But much like Delhi crime, these forest officials aren't just up against hunters and criminal networks alone. Theirs is an ongoing war with laziness, corruption, apathy, bureaucracy and a lack of resources. Once again, Richie fixes his sharp, sensitive gaze on honest, committed officers within a fractured, indifferent system. Once again, we have a fiery female officer at the helm. Forest Range Officer Mala, played by a terrific Nimisha Sajayan, along with her partner on the case, Alan Joseph, played with a reassuring calm and gentle stillness by Roshan Matthew. Mala and Alan are in many ways two extremes of what giving a shit looks like. For the more balanced, measured, pragmatic Alan, it's about focusing on what's in your control, doing what you can to help however you can. For Mala, who's been advocating for animal rights since she was three years old, this case is personal. Her father used to be a poacher and she feels like she must atone for his sins. Fueled by an uncompromising, boundless rage, Mala's job of protecting wildlife against people is her entire identity, her cause, her crusade. An officer with the spirit of a vigilante, she's all but given up on humanity. Forever on the verge of losing control, Mala's not all that different from the hunters she's hunting. Ruthless and relentless. Just watch the way her colleagues are at times afraid of her adamant, unnerving intensity. As we've seen before, Richie Mehta knows how to concoct a dense, suffocating atmosphere. Outdoors, he frames the jungle as a place that's at once majestic and menacing. And indoors, you can feel the wariness and exhaustion of these investigators in the air. Richie also knows how to construct a high-pressure race against time investigative narrative. A train manhunt in the third episode and a lavishly staged raid in the last episode are both standout sequences of nail-biting tension. Equally, cinematographer Johan Eit, who also shot Delhi Crime, uses long takes to place us right in the heart of the action. Find someone who loves you as much as Johan's camera loves storming into buildings behind these officers as they charge into suspects' homes, conduct raids and interrogations as if we were their backup. But Poacher's greatest achievement is using compelling drama to make us care. Each chapter opens with an ominous, bitterly ironic disclaimer that says, no animals were harmed during the making of this series. Most episodes also begin with the coldest of cold opens, as we see graphic shots of elephants massacred, their bodies rotting. One episode even shows a Poacher butchering an elephant's face to yank out its tusks. This series isn't looking to mince its words or soften the horrors and cruelty of this crime. Throughout the investigation, establishing shots also highlight the wildlife around these officers. 
forever looming in the background. On treetops, rooftops, around the jungle and even in the cities, we see leopards, eagles, hyenas, monkeys, foxes and deer. Always present, always watching, as if nature itself is taking a keen interest in this investigation. It's an initially effective device which does eventually become gimmicky after the 19th VFX animal. And that is an issue with Poacher. At times, it loves to forcefully underline and overstate its point. Moments where the agenda and lecturing threaten to overpower the organic drama and you can see through the writing. The narrative continually circles back to points it's already made to further hammer away at them. Take the shaky fourth episode. Aside from the fact that it's the most lethargic chapter of the series, this one episode has numerous instances of characters talking at us about the importance of wildlife conservation. There's an awkward TED talk in a van where Mala and her colleague lecture a suspect about the forest ecosystem. There's a firefly filled scene in the jungle later on when Alan explains the importance of his job to his wife. There's the continual reminders that the personal lives of these brave figures are in pieces because of the demands of their job. It's the series working overtime to make its point. The problem is the writing of the show overcompensates and spends too much time trying to talk to Vicky. You guys know Vicky, right? The kind of obnoxious self-centered dude who rides a motorcycle and gets his news from WhatsApp forwards. The kind of guy who thinks, yeah, but why should I care about elephants and so what if a few of them are killed? The lecturing lands somewhat only when it offers new information. For example, there's a zero context out of nowhere scene in which Neil Banerjee is taken on a walk by his boss who talks about how their job can only address selective animal cruelty because there's nothing they can do about the people and religious institutions who own elephants and keep them in captivity. He also says that it actually helps if they sustain the market for ivory at low levels because the only way to get people to care about preserving a species is if it comes after the word endangered. There are other rough edges too. A key source of tension and drama that ends one episode about transporting a key suspect across the country is miraculously solved by the beginning of the next. There's also a badass officer who's sidelined after a point. Trivandrum DFO Dina, played by an excellent Kani Kusruti. I just wish we got more Dina. Like her, Pocha is littered with more fine performances than I have time to mention, with Mukesh Chhabra working his casting magic yet again. One episode in particular which follows a group of Pochas into the jungle is full of fine acting talent, with a standout Suraj Pops as Aroku. When Pocha is good, it's great. This show may not be as focused or potent as Delhi Crime, but for me, it remains an achievement for the impact of its drama rather than offering consistently great drama. The writing may not always be the smoothest, but the show's sincerity and seething, pulsating fury are undeniable. I'll remember this series for what heroism and dedication look like on a day-to-day -day basis. Not grand takedowns and loud action, but a daily uphill battle of wading through layers of bureaucracy and mundane, mind-numbing groundwork that leads to more roadblocks than results, more troubles than triumphs, more washouts than wins. I'll remember Pocha for what it wants to say, that amidst the horrors of humanity, there are still heroes, there is still hope. You can watch Pocha on Amazon Prime Video. दोस्तों जिंदगी में अक्सर हम ऐसे क्रॉस रोड पर खड़े होते हैं जहां हमें समझ में नहीं आता कि अपना जॉब करते रहें या छोड़कर बंबई चले जाएं फिल्मों के लिए लिखना शुरू करें जो पढ़ाई कर रहे हैं वो करते रहें या किसी फिल्म स्कूल को ज्वाइन कर लें ये फैसले आसान नहीं होते आप हमारे साथ दो घंटे का ये कोर्स कीजिए एफ सी की तरफ से स्क्रीन राइटिंग मास्टर क्लास मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि ये कोर्स करने के बाद सिर्फ दो घंटे बाद आप इस फैसले को बेहतर ले पाएंगे आइए ज्वाइन कीजिए फिल्म कंपेनियन के YouTube चैनल पर